Let's bring in Phyllis Bennis. She's the director of the New Internationalism Project at the Institute for Policy Studies, and she joins us live from Washington, D.C. Phyllis, good to have you back on the program. U.S. media reports suggesting that Saudi Arabia is getting to release this statement that Khashoggi died as a result of an investigation gone wrong and that it wasn't sanctioned by the highest levels of government. But as we saw Samantha Power saying in that report, um, it does seem completely absurd that a team of rogue killers could have carried this out without the leadership knowing. How is that going down in Washington there? Well, I think nobody is accepting this as a legitimate position. It's not only Samantha Power who is skeptical about this. I don't think anyone is taking this very seriously. The notion that this could happen without the direct approval of uh, Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, uh, who is very tightly controlling the administration of the of the Saudi government, simply boggles the mind. This is this is made up. It also, we should note, even if that were true, if that ridiculous story happened to be true, it would still be an incredible violation of international law. The notion of uh, a, a brutal, violent interrogation that wasn't supposed to end in death, but ended with somebody who happened to have a bone saw with him to dismember the body. It, there's just nothing about it that makes any sense. We it should note this is not the first time that a U.S. ally has, has committed uh, massive crimes, a war crime. It's not the first time the Saudis have. And President Trump is not the first U.S. president to allow that to happen without any real consequence. There's no red lines for allies in most cases. The difference okay. here is that this was so blatant and that it's had this extraordinary reaction from the public, from the press, for a whole host of reasons that, that Jamal Khashoggi was not just a Saudi, dip, a Saudi critic, but he was a, a legal resident of the United States. He writes for the Washington Post, one of the most influential papers here. He speaks fluent English, has lots of ties within the, uh, within the establishment okay. here in Washington. So yeah, sorry, Phyllis, let me just jump in there because uh, time is against us here a little bit. Um, we've sure. seen how President Trump uh, and officials like Jared Kushner have a very cozy relationship with the Saudis, all part of the U.S. policy of building this anti-Iran coalition. How much is that driving this pretty lukewarm response from the White House over Khashoggi's death? I think that's ultimately the main reason here. The relationship, this little bromance that we've seen between the two crown princes, as it were, between MBS in Saudi Arabia and Jared Kushner here, has been all about Iran. It's all about building this coalition that would involve Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and crucially Israel in a U.S.-backed coalition against Iran. And if that is the main goal, which I believe it is, of the Trump administration in the region right now, nothing will be allowed to get in the way of that. So you have President Trump making these crazy claims that this was a, a rogue element that somehow was not approved uh, by the prince or by the king or anyone else. It just sort of happened. And that's because they want to protect the potential for this, uh, this important okay. coalition. Uh, Phyllis, just a final thought from you very briefly. So how do you assess the inevitable consequences of the Khashoggi killing? I mean, is the U.S. finally likely, perhaps, to at least restrict arms sales to Saudi Arabia? Could the U.S. end its support of the war in Yemen, maybe? I think that we're going to see, for the first time, a real possibility of a cut in the arms sales uh, to Saudi Arabia. These arms sales, of course, did not begin under President Trump. They began many, many decades ago. They were carried out through last administrations, including President Obama's administration. But Congress is now very, very angry about this. And there is the possibility that Congress may move. It may turn out that Jamal Khashoggi's uh, murder, assuming that that is what in fact happened, will result in the possibility of a bringing much closer an end to the war in Yemen. Perhaps it will not have been completely in vain. It's not a situation where, where he had ever acknowledged that Trump and Kushner might be complicit in this, although Khashoggi himself did call for a ceasefire in Yemen, did blame the Yemen uh, uh, humanitarian crisis on the prince. Uh, okay. He didn't say that Trump and Kushner were complicit, but indeed they are. Phyllis Bennis there in Washington, D.C. Phyllis, thank you very much indeed.